The Rubik's Cube is one of the most fascinating puzzles in history, because even though it's so difficult to solve, the concept of how the puzzle works is really simple. And because of that, there are many common misconceptions that I will be breaking down today. Number 1. A Rubik's Cube should be solved one color at a time. Uh, no. The reason the cube is not solved one side at a time is because when you solve a side, you don't actually solve all the pieces on that side. This is because each physical piece has multiple colors on it. This edge piece has white and orange, this corner piece has white, red, and blue. So those colors all have to be in the right spot, or this piece as a whole is not in the right spot. And if you take the cube apart, you will see that the individual colors will never separate from each other as this is just one piece by itself. Since these must always stick together, it makes more sense to solve a layer. That way you can actually put all the pieces in their correct spots. The two most popular speed solving methods are CFOP and RU. CFOP begins by solving the first two layers and then solving the top layer afterwards. And with RU you would solve the left and right layer and then solve the middle layer afterwards. Number 2. Solving a Rubik's Cube requires you to have a high IQ and be good at math. I've definitely heard people say before that when I'm solving, I look so focused and I'm probably doing calculations in my head. That's not even remotely true. Usually what I'm doing during a solve is just looking at the colors of two pieces at once and then doing something based on what I see. So it's pretty much just pattern recognition and then knowing what to do afterwards. The part where I figure out what to do is not calculations, it's just stuff I've planned in advance. I know that when I see this, I'm supposed to put them together and then insert them into this slot. Number three, there is a secret for how to easily solve the cube. I don't know what to say besides no there isn't, but if there was, it would be common knowledge by now as the Rubik's Cube has been out and popular for over 40 years. Now, there are beginner methods to solving the cube that work for everyone, so you don't have to be super smart or anything to do this, but even then, it takes some effort, a bit of memorization, and definitely a lot of practice on your part to be able to remember how to do this. And I think it's pretty safe to say we'll never have a very simple method where you can just see it and do it right away. There will always be some level of practice involved. And if a secret easy method like that existed, then what would be the point of learning how to do this if I can't go around impressing random people? Oh, and videos like these are 100% fake. Number 4. The more time I spend scrambling the cube, the harder it will be to solve it. This is a common thing I notice when solving for people in public, and this also goes along with hiding the cube so I don't see the moves that they're doing, and trying to make the hardest scramble possible by separating any groups of the same color. Look, all of that is wrong. When scrambling for someone to solve, no one will actually watch the moves you're doing, and plus, after about 6 or 7, I, I'm unable to reverse this by myself just looking at it. And if we keep going to around 20 moves, as long as they're pretty much random, then at that point, it's going to be as hard as any scramble will be. However, you may still create lucky situations for the solver, and if you're the type of person who really wants to mess with the person solving the cube, then here's how to make the hardest scramble possible for them. Most cubers use the beginner or CFOP method, which both start with a cross, and most people will start with the white cross. And also, most cubers when looking at the cube to begin with will not plan more than just the cross, so all you have to do is make the cross difficult, and that's going to give them the hardest possible scramble. And the way to do that is to find the white edge pieces and put them around the yellow center on the side. So that could be by putting this one here, by putting this one here, and by putting this one here, if you can't do all four, that's fine, but the more you can put up here around the yellow center, the harder it will be for the person to make the cross. So there you go, go mess with your local cubers. Number 5. We figure out the entire solution before starting the solve. This is something I've often heard said about faster solvers, and the reason is because we're going so fast that clearly there's no time to stop and think, which must mean we've planned out everything from the start. But the reason an advanced solver will be able to do things without pausing is because of something called look ahead. This is where as you solve some pieces, you're looking at the pieces you're going to solve next. That way you can go into them right away without pausing, and it can make it look like we've planned everything in advance, when in reality we are just constantly predicting a few turns into the future so we do not have to pause. And this idea is extremely important in any activity that requires fast decision making. Human reaction time is honestly not very fast, and that's why you always have to look a little into the future to have the most optimized speed. Number 6. Speed cubing requires a lot of natural talent. For the people constantly getting 3 second solves, 
Yeah, maybe. But if you want to solve a Rubik's Cube on average in under 20 seconds, pretty much anyone can do this, given enough practice, of course. As with any skill, natural talent can affect your rate of improvement and your peak skill level. From what I've seen and what a lot of people agree with is hard work is definitely more important. If you want to be the best in the world, of course you will need both. But generally speaking, if you want to take any skill very far beyond what you ever thought was possible for yourself, hard work can get you there. Number seven, we solve cubes as a mental challenge. So once we can do it a few times, why is it still interesting? It's like saying tennis is a physical challenge, and once you can hit the ball over the net into the court every single time, why do you still play? Of course we like cubing because it's a challenge, but the real challenge is in solving it faster and faster, learning new techniques, breaking through mental and physical barriers you didn't think you'd be able to do, going to competitions to compete and hang out with friends who do the same thing, or to develop your puzzle solving skills to be able to tackle a variety of different puzzles. What makes a hobby interesting is always so much more than it initially seems. Number 8. Bigger cubes are harder to solve. I recently got a 10x10 from Speedcube Shop, but some of the comments were wondering whether or not I'd be able to solve this. And the answer is, of course I can solve this, and the reason is because I can solve big cubes in general, which means that I can solve the bigger cubes with no problem. The truth is, as cubes get bigger, they don't necessarily get harder, after 3x3. The method that you can use to solve any big cube is by reducing it to a 3x3, and this part is much simpler than solving a 3x3. Since a 3x3 has center pieces, edge pieces with two colors, and corner pieces with three colors, then you would just turn the big cube into this. So that would mean starting with one center, and then all of the centers, and then one edge piece, but remember to keep the centers fixed, there it is, and then all of the edges, and now it is just a 3x3. So there are center pieces, edge pieces, and corner pieces. And as long as you only turn the outer layer, then this is pretty much the same as a 3x3. So there's the cross, and then here's an F2L pair, more F2L pairs, and there is F2L, or I guess first three layers. From here, there are two issues you can run into called parity errors, and they can happen across all big cubes. The first is you can get a flipped edge where it's not possible to happen on 3x3, where you'd have to learn an algorithm on how to flip this. And then when you get to PLL, you can get impossible cases here as well. So then you would have to also learn how to fix these. So those are just two algorithms to fix and they apply across all big cubes. Now, as you get to bigger cubes, of course, there are more pieces you have to deal with. So creating the center, creating the edges, those all take longer, but that doesn't make them any more difficult since the concept is exactly the same. You just have to put in more time. It can be a lot of time. Number 9. Our brains work differently. Obviously, everyone's brain works slightly differently, but nobody's brain works like a computer. Anytime it seems like somebody's brain does something so much better than yours, one of three things is happening. One, they have practiced way more than you. They may have even spent their whole life on it. Or two, they are using mental techniques that you are not using. For example, I can solve a 3x3 cube blindfolded, and what you might think that means is as I do turns, I can perfectly track where every piece is going. No, that's not true. Look at this, and look at this. I am using special algorithms that only affect a few pieces at once, that way I don't have to keep track of where all the pieces have gone. All I really have to do is memorize the state of the cube at the start, there's no more memorization than just that. And while there are 9 colors on each side for 54 colors, there are only 20 pieces because as I mentioned earlier, a lot of these colors cannot separate from each other. Now, 20 things still sounds like a lot to memorize, but not when you convert each piece into a letter and then write a really, really short story out of it. And if you want to see this in action, I have a video where I do a blindfolded solve on a robot cube. So yeah, that was a thing that happened. Or the third thing that could be happening is both of 1 and 2 at the same time. And that is exactly why people can solve a cube blindfolded in 15 seconds, or why a chess pro can find the best move before you've even seen all the pieces, or why people can memorize a deck of cards faster than you can deal them all out. The human brain is not a computer, but it can still go much further than you ever could have imagined, including yours. Number 10. Some people can solve the cube, but you can't. Yes, you can. 